Hey guys, Michael here. In this video, I'm going to be talking about two updated applications that ship with Windows 7, the calculator and paint. Now, everyone knows the calculator and paint from their days with Windows XP and even if they're on Windows Vista. And I believe th th these applications were also included with previous versions of Windows, even though I don't have experience with them. But in Windows 7, these two applications have been totally revamped and are just basically reborn. I mean, compared to old versions, paint is so much better and even the calculator is so much better so we'll start off with the calculator first so this is just pretty much the standard interface of the calculator everyone knows it it's the same as what it's always been you can do your multiplication you have your division you have all of the same things really that you've had before but what really comes down to it is this new category called mode so when you click mode, you now have an option for scientific, programmer, and statistics. So we'll do statistics. We'll do scientific first. As you can see, it makes it wider. You have options for degree radian, all that. Um, you have your sine, your cosine, your tangent. You have all that, and you still have your stuff over here. So it's it's a pretty it's advanced. You know, you have those different functions that you definitely did not have in previous versions of the calculator. You also have your programming calculator for pro for you programmers out there. So you have your hexadecimals, binary, you have all that, and you can type in numbers, all that. And then finally, your statistics calculator. This is the long, skinnier one. But, like I just showed you, you have more than just your mode. So we'll, we'll just go back to the standard mode, just because it's easier to show. But if you go to options, like I just hinted at, you have basic, which is what we're on now, but you also have these other options. So let's do unit conversion first. So now you can convert angles to radian or degrees and all that. You have r angle, radian, I mean, r angle, area, energy, length, power, pressure, temperature, time, velocity, volume, weight, and mass to radian, degree, and then you have the same engine and gradient also. You have that in there. You also have date calculation, so if you want to calculate the difference between two dates or add or subtract days to a specific date, you can do that. You can, you know, choose on a, on a map, or you can just put, or not on a map, on a calendar, and you can just choose things here, and you get the differences down there. Or you can choose some, from some templates, which is really cool. So the first one is gas mileage, so if you want, you enter in your distance, and then your fuel consumption you can get that so if distance you can enter the values for that fuel consumption mileage which is cool your lease estimate you can enter your lease value period payments per year residual value interest rate and periodic payment you enter all that stuff in and then you can press calculate and get your lease estimate or even a more mortgage estimate also you can put down your down payment your purchase price your terms along with the interest rate and then you can go in and press calculate and it'll give you you know what what it thinks you're gonna have to pay per month and that's just really cool because to have that in a uh, sorry about that to have that in a simple in, in in the simple calculator on your computer is really convenient instead of having to break out a special calculator or to look up some documentation that'll give you that information or to, or to call a professional to give you that information you know you can just use the standard calculator that comes with your operating system to give you an estimate of how much you're going to have to pay which is really great I mean, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that this is better than having your own calculator, better than knowing people that'll know how to do this. But to have, you know, just this built into the operating system for just estimates and looking things up, and just instead of looking things up and having this power right from the desktop is just really cool. So there's the paint app, the uh, calculator application. We'll just close that. Now it's time for paint. Everyone knows what paint is. One of the big things that I use Paint for uh, when I used to use Windows was for screenshots and quick editing. If I took a screenshot, I'd paste it into Paint, I'd crop out the things I didn't need, or I would just save it from there because everyone knows you, your screenshots didn't automatically get saved to the desktop like in Windows. I mean, like in Mac OS X. But really, things that people have used that Microsoft looked and said, this is what people use, so let's find out what they need. So... Let's just look at this top bar first. There we go. So over here, you have your paint button, and there from there you can move 
you can change the size, minimize or maximize or close, pretty much the standard. Then you have a save button here and your redo and undo buttons, as well as this button here that allows you to customize. So let's say you wanted to see your print preview, so you can do that, have the print preview button in there and it'll preview it, obviously. We'll turn that print preview button off, and then you have the title here. So let's just zoom back out, I guess, and we'll just show you the rest of the application. So from here, you have pretty much your new paint window options. So if you go there, you have new, open, save, save as, and then it'll give you some more options here, PNG, JPEG, bitmap, GIF, and other formats. Same with print, you can choose print, print setup, and print preview from here. And then send in an email, which is really cool, or from a scanner or a camera, you can import, which is really cool. Set as desktop background. So if you create an image here, a lot of people do that. They'll take a picture from the internet, and they'll put it into paint, and then they'll save it, and then they'll set that as, an, as your desktop background. But, for now, but now, you can bring that picture in, same as before, make whatever edits you want, and then right from the program, you can do that. You can set it as your background. And uh, let's just say I do something quickly in there. If I do that, I can do center, tile, or fit. So all those options that everyone knows from setting backgrounds and windows are right here in paint. And then you also have your properties, which will give you image properties. So last save, resolution, you can do image, you can do your units in inches, centimeters, or pixels, and then colors, black and white, or color. We'll leave it in color. So, and here's your new, I guess you could say, ribbon. You have your, you can paste from here, cut or copy. You can select a part of it, and then to do something with that, if you just want to cut that or copy that, we'll copy it, and then we'll paste it again. So now we have two of, I guess, the, pretty much the same things here. That's really interesting. Then from here, you can choose your pencil, your paint, your, your paint bucket, uh, just text. You can zoom. You can use the dropper to pick up a color, or you can use the eraser. You have some shapes over here that are, if you want to put the shapes in, put another, we'll put a star in, we'll put, a, we'll put another arrow in, I guess. Then you can outline with a solid color, oil, natural pencil. So you have a lot of settings for those things. Let's go to brushes here. Um, before that, let's just, you have also just, we'll finish it, size, stroke, fill, your colors, and then edit colors over here, so if you press that, you have all the different colors, and you can choose a custom color from that. But let's say I wanted to go to brushes, and let's say I wanted to choose, well, you have you have your brush, you have different brushes, you have crayon, let's do the crayon. That's kind of cool, gives you a cool effect. But what, everyone is familiar with this, where it's just the computer generated one. But let's say you didn't want that. You can choose a watercolor brush. And from there, we'll choose this blue. Watch, I'm not going to let release it. But it just faded out because it ran out of color, just like a real, you know, paintbrush. Again, I hold, I hold, I hold. It's starting to fade, it's starting to fade, it's starting to fade, it's starting to fade. And there we go, it faded out. Look, I'm still holding the mouse. Like a real thing. So they really wanted paint to be an extension of what you would draw on your piece of paper in front of you. They really tried to make it so anything you could do, you know, on that piece of paper, you can do here. And then you even have the conveniences of being able to select part of it, copy it, and paste it so you have two copies. And they just really added some computer features to make it easier to use instead of just making it a computerized paint, which I don't like. I like this because it's basically an extension of anything you could draw on a piece of paper. Your brushes will run out and it'll change based on, you know, how long you've been pressing it down. So they really did a great job with paint and the calculator. It's just massive improvements over what we've seen in the previous version of these two applications. And, I mean, it's not something that you'd necessarily want to go out and, and, and pay extra for. You'd want to add it to your operating system or anything like that. But it's just really nice that, they, that Microsoft has included this in Windows 7 because it's just a nice touch to have and add on to the experience of everyone using Windows 7. So again, these are just the updated calculator and paint applications in Windows 7. This is Beta 1 Build 7000. For more of my content, please go to youtube.com slash the revived one. Watch my videos, favorite them, rate them, and please subscribe if you haven't. Thanks a lot, guys, and take care.